as embarrassing to admit as this is, I generally find warm-up drawing exercises and quick sketches to be boring. If you're like me and you'd rather jump straight into creating a finished piece of art rather than practicing the fundamentals, then I think this video will be helpful to level your drawing skills. Hi, I'm Françoise, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna demo an exercise that's working really well to draw but in a way that feels fun and satisfying. I'll share my process too so you can try it at home and throughout the video, you'll get to see exactly why I find this exercise to be so addictive and how great it will be to work on a bunch of art skills without spending hours on one finished piece. And stick around for a gift from me later on too. You're not gonna need a bunch of fancy supplies to get started. All you need to do is to ditch your pencils and ink pens and grab a box of watercolor or water soluble pencils instead. And if you already watched my videos, you've seen me paint with watercolor pencils, but this time we're going to use them for drawing more than painting. It's gonna be like an ideal in between without all the disadvantages that an art medium might present when you just wanna work on your drawing skills. You will need watercolor paper with a smooth finish like the hot pressed kind, this one is actually cold press, but the tooth is fine. While some of the other cold press papers can sometimes feel more rough and will make pencil drawing difficult. And we will work with one small round or round and pointed watercolor paintbrush for more precision, one water jar, paper towels. Masking tape is absolutely optional, but I like to have it so my sheet doesn't move around as I draw. Next, just start with whatever feels easier to you just to try this out. And here I wanted to challenge myself. So I went for a figure drawing because all the theory behind that really puts me off. To make the exercise fun, easy, and sustainable, I knew I have to address three problems that prevented me from practicing in the first place. The first problem I addressed was too much theory getting in the way of just getting started because I just wanted to draw more spontaneously, even though I knew it would be challenging at first. That's why when theory makes us procrastinate and not draw at all, I found that relying on watercolor and water suitable pencils can help. And you will see how as I demo this male dancer drawing after practicing with a bunch of other references first. So first I made the bold move to freehand draw something complex and I realized that this might look completely intimidating and unrelatable to some of you guys. But first, keep in mind that I practiced and only got better from there. And second, you'll see how mistakes are allowed and totally okay thanks to the water soluble pencil aspect of things. You can go for a regular 2B pencil or a 2B water soluble graphite pencil like me. I sketch very lightly with a little pressure added and I focus on getting the main lines in. And it's always a bit terrifying to be that spontaneous even for a seasoned artist. And if I can let you in on a secret, the reason why I'm able to sketch so accurately now is due to practicing. But the real reason is because I've learned to observe my references really well. I always find something to start from and I build up on top of my first line, then the next and the next. I do a lot of back and forth with my eyes between the reference and my paper and I always look at the little landmarks that could help me refine this or that part and get the drawing to look more and more accurate. And my best advice in this first stage is to work from an inspiring reference and focus on your observation skills rather than learning theory. It won't be easy and miraculous at first, but you will certainly train your eye little by little and make noticeable progress. That's why some people seem to draw so well without any training. They observe really well first, and that has an effect on all the other skills that we should know as an artist like placing the right tonal values in the right places, things like that. Another tip that I can give you when you're starting to draw is to look at the reference from farther away to stop focusing on the details if they distract you and to be able to just focus on the main shape of what it is you want to draw. Also, don't worry about perfection because if you were to compare my drawings to the references, 
I can tell you that they're never 100% accurate and this is why I'm so obsessed with water soluble and water pencils and I'm going to show you now. The second problem that I addressed is how boring it is to me to just fix a drawing with an eraser and then start over with a pencil and so on. And you're going to see that watercolor and water soluble pencils work quite differently. Because it's easy for me to refine the drawing once I have my main shape. And before I do it, I like to take a step back first, just to make sure that something doesn't look terribly off. Remember that this won't come natural to you at first, there will be mistakes. But even then, watercolor and water soluble pencils can help you. Because look at what happens when we leverage the water soluble aspect of the pencils. First, you can see I'm pushing the drawing experiment further by adding more and more details like I would with a regular pencil and I really focus on the darkest areas first for this to work. I don't even bother about the mid and light tones. I use a 4B water soluble graphite pencil so it shows better than the 2B but if you were to do it with color right away and completely skip the graphite, that would work too. And that's for a very good reason. Watercolor and water soluble pencils can be blended with water. Not only does that allow me to soften or completely remove the parts that are looking incorrect to me, thanks to the water, as long as the pencil marks aren't too strong, I can also move the paint around once it has been activated and that it's wet to alter or improve the shape of my subject. I didn't have trouble with this guy, but I did run into problems with some of these drawings and I managed to fix them so they look pretty good. And that's why I think it feels easy and less overwhelming than the idea of being stuck with the original drawing and having to press harder to conceal something. Here with the water, we're smoothing it all out and removing or adding elements, if we need to. Another really cool thing about drawing in this way is the realism. If you like the looks, it's really fast to achieve some level of it. And if you need help and learn my technique in depth, I'm excited to share that I'm offering a free tutorial on my Patreon to celebrate the start of this new year. And you'll learn to draw and paint something simple, the spoon, in a 40 minute real time lesson. I also painted this landscape using this technique for my chocolate decadence and cherry on top tier patrons. And I have a bunch of other watercolor pencil and watercolor tutorials. So head on over to the description of my video if you'd like to join us there. So first it was all about observation to get an accurate drawing. Then we keep observing to make sure to spot those dark parts and block them in in our drawing. And then we learn to use a paintbrush and water to our advantage to go remove or add things. The third problem that I wanted to fix was the lack of satisfaction from just drawing quick sketches and specific warm up exercises. And you'll see that you'll be able to spice things up with watercolor and water soluble pencils. And that's because we can keep the art a bit loose thanks to the watercolor aspect or more realistic with more layers thanks also to the pencil aspect. We can have it in black and white so we can make it colorful or a mix of both like I'm doing here when I overlap watercolor pencils on top of water soluble graphite pencils. And don't even get me started on all the different types of water soluble pencils that exist. At this stage, if you want, you can press a bit harder in those areas where you need more vibrancy with your chosen colors. And if you take the route that I went for here, you can choose to blend the pigment for a smoother look or just leave it for more of a colored pencil look. I love the idea of using water soluble graphite first to pave the way for the rest of the drawing with darker lines, but I could have used just color. I also love that I don't need to get too mental about the small details for it to look realistic. Because if you look at the face, for instance, it's detailed enough, but not that much either. And it still works because there are dark, mid and light tones in it. And that shapes it and makes it look more realistic. The pencils are easy to use as regular colored pencils as well. And that's why here I'm using the white watercolor pencil in this way. And you can see that a short blood and some pressure will be all you need for those last details to pop. If this video was inspiring, please let me know in the comments. I hope I was successful showing that you can draw inaccurately and still fix it. 
how also you can be a perfectionist and love realism but still keep it simple, and how you can practice while still keeping it quick and fun. And all that thanks to those pencils' ability to blend so well and so fast. Now to learn how to nail the blending part, I would recommend this video next. Otherwise, I'll see you on Patreon with a spoon tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.